yeah. you know we just use each other in the industry what i meant basically is that yeah. i come for a favor from you you do a favor for me you know at the end of the day you're happy i'm happy and you know we move on from that you know that times when yeah. you know i was not in a position of power and when i got to nexus and that's when some people say oh actually kb can help me in this but when i'd come for something you know you didn't see the value at the time yeah so that's how you need to look at it when it was not fashionable in Zambia in 2014 15 mm -hmm. to have a music on Apple music because you know nobody was really using Apple music in Zambia everybody was yeah. going to Zambia music blog um, you know in Dimba that's where people were downloading the music from and you know the, the the way the artist was thinking was I need to flood my music I need to have it on all the blogs so that everybody can have access to my music once everybody's got access to my music mm -hmm. I'm able to get shows the mindset at the time yeah. but I saw Roberto thinking I don't want to have my music and so I, th I thought to me I was like that's a bit stupid like why would you do that you know until I had a conversation with him and I actually started seeing the numbers I started seeing the money that he was making from his Amarula and you know and the money was coming in and the money was so good and I got interested people didn't hear my music because anybody that tried to upload my music for free I'd hunt them down take it down notice that just by just by consistently putting material out your numbers automatically just going up then this time I see like a huge amount of money in my account I'm like this is huge. I've never, I've never seen such a report. Where did this man come from? So I click and I see his boom play. I'm confused. Boom play. It's like, who is boom play? Very few people were using Spotify. The very few people, elite people like you, you know, somebody from Tendere. But no, 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 no. See, this, this mindset is the problem. No, no, no. But you know, this. There, there are apps. I, no, there are apps. I, I, I totally agree. In both cases. It is nothing, technology, nothing but there are some people that yeah. just. It's, it's a brand. It's, 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 a it's cumbersome thing. for some people to go through that. You know, Boom Play is like a free app. You don't have to do nothing. Spotify is a free app. Yeah, the problem people have with Spotify is that it doesn't allow you to do certain things yeah. if you haven't paid. Yeah. If you haven't paid, That's I mean, that business yeah. sense. You yeah. shouldn't have all the access if you're not paying. Why should you pay if you're experiencing the same thing on a free plan? First of all, YouTube. Can you speak on YouTube? Because yeah. I feel like a lot of Zambians don't understand. They think if they stream your YouTube video a million times, you automatically no. get money. It, it, it's it's based on how many monetized views did you get? Yeah. That's how it works. It's not mm -hmm. about, oh, automatically when I do one million, I'm going to get $2,000. It doesn't work like that. It's yeah. how many monetized views. So first of all, one, your channel has to be monetized. It doesn't have to be monetized. You You're can, you, saying you, if I post a video on YouTube yeah. as a Zambian. Yeah. If you post a video, if, if your channel is mon not monetized, mm. if you can always tell Twinkle to monetize on your behalf. No, yes. In that case, it works. But yes. I'm talking about people who post videos on YouTube. Yeah, it has to be monetized. Link, yeah, they need oh, to if it's not monetized, you're going to make money. Well, yeah. How are you, you going to make money? You're no, because that's what Zambians don't oh, know. No. They, how? They, think, they think because there are millions of views, no. they should pay you money. You can have even one billion. If it's not monetized, <laughs> how are you going to make money? It was not monetized. It's not monetized. That's what our people think. No. You know, people thought bloggers made money from the internet that the people used to download the music. Because Come on. They thought Airtel and MTN pay bloggers oh. for the people <laughs> that. <laughs> so it's good to educate people, yeah? <laughs> yeah, so the same, the same with YouTube. People think just because the music is there, no. if it gets numbers, No, it, gets it doesn't money. work like that. It has to be yeah. monetized. That's the only way you're going to make yeah. money. So it's you a, yeah. either do it through TuneCo yes. or you monetize your channel yes. and then they're able to do it yes. with the ad place. Yes. Okay. That's why we always say, guys, consult you know yeah. some of us have made it priority me you and a couple of people that spent five years just researching for me it's as good as i went to school because it's something i used to do every single evening like when i get home i'm mm. researching i'm trying error i research i try it it doesn't work I, you know i ask i send email there are all these things you know you send email then all yeah. oh, the email you back oh it works like this then you learn you learn from there then you know yeah and and, and that's the reason why we're trying to educate the masses you know and yeah. I understand you use Tunco for your distribution. How did you arrive at that? So Tunco by default, um, I saw it from Roberto and Roberto recommended it because he was the one that he's been using. He had been using yeah. and it's the only distributor that I knew at the time. Mm -hmm. So by default, I just started using it. But at some point, I, I started getting curious. I wanted to know about other distributors. So obviously, I would go on YouTube and, you know, search the top distributors. And I remember there was a time when I think DistroKid was slightly you know ranked higher than tunco and you know there were so many nice things said about it i got curious so i'd put some of my content there mm -hmm. um like for the year for some reason i didn't like it i i don't know you know i, I think it's just a matter of preference yeah. i didn't i didn't like it as much so i yeah. brought down my content that was the diary uh, the diary uh songs 
Yeah. I brought them down, then I put them back on uh, Chunko. On Chunko. Uh, well, I still use it. I think I've got like one or two songs there, if I'm not mistaken. And I've tried to use other distributors like one RPM. Eh, I didn't like it either. Mm-hmm. It's okay. You know, I still try to explore, but for some reason... So I what just exactly are the benefits of Tunco that you haven't seen in other distribution platforms? I wouldn't really say benefits that I haven't seen. I, I mean, I think I think Tunco and Distrokid are very similar. Um, I think in just the payment mm-hmm. plans. Um, I, I don't know about Distrokid, but Tunco gives you a report every week. Comprehensive mm-hmm. reports. Yeah. You know, you're able to see your reports if there's any... If there's any money that has come in, you know, they'll show you and where it came from. Let's say, for example, if, mm-hmm. if, if, if uh, Spotify and TikTok have made some payment, they yeah. even break it down. They even tell you which regions, which country, um, you know, exactly how many streams you got and that sort of thing. You know, that whole breakdown, I like it. And they've made mm-hmm. things easier now. Uh, if you had multiple artists yeah. on, uh, on, say, for example, on Tunco, there's a way where you can, you don't have to go one by one by month you can just select the month say for example january to december yeah and just go to a specific artist song and it will give you everything all the songs you know everything it just gives you one figure and you're able to see and it makes life easy so i don't know if the other distributors have that um they do but i think to the degree of detail i think chunko has like the the best reports in terms of exactly so that's one thing i like but chunko is so detailed they give you every single detail Mm -hmm. which country exactly how many streams you got you you are even able to tell what song is performing well and on what platform so i'm able to know like oh this song of mine performs better on Spotify than mm-hmm. on Apple. This is the one that performs better. So you're able to see all that, all those statistics, and that's <clears throat> that's what I like about I like about um, about Chunko. And I think that's the reason why I always had reservations um, when other distributors approached me when I was next to CEO, saying, you know, they they wanted to sign us up, and and I think to myself, I can do that by myself using Chunko. So what's the difference? And, you know, they'll tell you, oh, no, we can give you playlisting, we can do this, this and that. You know, all the people that say that, I've never seen I've that. I've never seen. I've actually, I'm sorry to say this. Uh, actually, I have got better numbers than people that are signed to some of these um, these distributors. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I think I've got more playlists. My song, Kalema, has got over 2,000, is on over 2,000 playlists. I mean, I, I haven't gotten on, on one of those elite. I know you have managed to, to crack that one out, but you see, that's the next step. So yeah. if you're not offering that, then why am I giving you a percentage if I can do it myself? Yeah. Maybe people are watching and they're thinking, okay, this streaming stuff sounds good. How do I get on? How do I get my music on streaming platforms? It's very difficult. You need to see a consultant. I mean, I, I can tell you to start now, but... It's very complex, you know, there's, you know, the back and forth. I've seen somebody... It's, it's, there, it's funny that what you're saying is true, but it's, it sounds exaggerated. It's true. <laughs> I've yeah. had people that come to me, oh, KB, can you help? Blah, blah, blah. There's this one one guy that I, 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 I uploaded the first song for them, mm-hmm. you know. I actually showed them. I was with them when I was uploading it, and they thought, yeah. ah, I can do it. Yeah. The second time they tried to do it, first of all, they didn't get the artwork uh, right, you know, because there, there are rules. Yeah, you know, it has yeah. to be in certain specification. You mm-hmm. can't have it over clustered. You can't have information on the artwork. Then put, uh, you know, different information that you... On the metadata. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, the, with Tunco, you, you know, brackets or, you know, like there's just certain things that they're yeah. just rules. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. obviously, you know, how you upload it. There's so many things, you know. They the can file s- format. The, of the file audio. format. Even sometimes, maybe if there was like a sample that they're not too sure about, or maybe you did a collaboration with your mom's and thinking your mom's is a big artist. Like, how did you manage to, you know, we need proof and, you know, you need to prove that. And there's so many Chunko things. does that too. Yeah. But now they don't. For yeah. me, they don't because I think they've, com- they've, they've confirmed, confirmed it by now. Yeah. But before they used to do that. Like, yeah. even like with Rosary, it was a back and forth. Like, I remember when I featured Rosary from Tanzania, there was your mobs. Marquis was like, oh, there are too many superstars yeah. on this one particular song. You know, we want to prove that you actually are the owner. So, you know, you have to mm-hmm. get maybe a, a letter or some of the way they sign and, you know, you screenshot it or whatever, yeah. you scan it and, you know, you send it back to them and say, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, I actually own the rights to this song. So, there yeah. are all those things, those cumbersome things that come into play. And, you know, mm-hmm. if. And if you're you're not able to email back and forth, you probably never have your music go live, and you just get frustrated. So, yeah. if you come and see a person like me, I'll be able to say red flag. Like 
that is not going to fly that or this this you know what i'm saying i'm able mm -hmm. to to advise you appropriately even before you put it on you know because what i don't want is the back and forth yeah so when you come to me i listen to it i look at the artwork just by looking at the artwork i say this this will get rejected why because first of all that letter d is not clear i know that the artwork guy was trying to do something fancy but it looks like a c written backwards mm -hmm. you know yeah. and tunko don't play they would just look at it and say no nah, 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 this doesn't look like d and the inconvenience with that is you could promote it's dropping on friday yeah. then they flag it exactly. and then it doesn't drop on friday and another thing that you need to do is that you know zambians have got a habit of dropping friday and the song hasn't even been recorded i know artists <laughs> that i swear to god <laughs> a big artist i swear i'm not even lying to you the song is not recorded some of these are my friends you know i'm talking <laughs> to my, I, i'm talking to like yeah I'm, I'm dropping on on on, on new year's eve I'm like, can I hear it? I ah, know it's just it's just the chorus has been done, but you know, uh, <laughs> I've been recording my verses or whatever, whatever. I know, I know artists that yeah. I remember like, oh, I want to put out a song on Friday. It's okay, just send it to me so I can upload it in advance. No, 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 not yet ready. Kanye artist hasn't even recorded. Yeah, he's planning to record the night before it drops. Then the but guy is busy mixing. Let me finish. <laughs> the guy is busy mixing and he finishes mixing at 05 and he wants the song to be out at eight. I'm like, guys, how on earth do you even expect that to happen? Like in what world? Yes, if you're doing it with with the bloggers, have, yeah, bloggers, with the bloggers, yes, it would have been possible. You just send it to a blogger, wow. and blogger would just. Are we still have people, people like that? These are these are grown. Yes, my brother. People like me and you, established people that have been in the industry as long as I have been. Wow. And I try to tell people, listen, plan in advance. If you're putting out something, plan in advance. Yeah. You know, if I'm making a song right now, me personally, the minimum is two weeks. That's yeah. my minimum. I don't even do one week. My minimum is two weeks. I plan everything two weeks. Mm -hmm. Normally, if I'm doing an album, I like to plan a month. I upload the album a month before. Like mm -hmm. the Chile one. I, I remember telling Chile one, yeah. we cannot rush this. We have to make sure everything is done properly so that, you know, you, you want to avoid the inconvenience. Say, for example, we put it, we schedule a month before. Mm -hmm. Then they find an error somewhere. Mm -hmm. I have enough time for me to rectify that and still have the album ready at the set date. Now yeah. imagine you're giving me that three days before mm -hmm. and I put it, then I get an email and say, no, we flagged one song because we think, you know, something is not right. Yeah. I write back to them, they're going to take 48 hours to respond to me. Mm -hmm. Already you have defaulted. Yeah. You know? That's why I've seen some people desperation now, they just put the music on YouTube, oh no, it's going to be live. <laughs> and for me, that's unprofessional. It is. It is very unprofessional. That's the reason why you need to... Can you... Can you also speak on videos going up before the audio? So the biggest disadvantage of videos going before you upload the music, the danger is that the cyber thieves out there mm -hmm. that when they know it's a big song, the first thing they do is that they'll search first. They'll search on Spotify. But, oh, it's not there. Mm -hmm. They quickly download it mm -hmm. and use a distributor that can distribute in the shortest period of time. That distributors can distribute in, in 48 hours, if I'm not mistaken. Three days, two days, yeah. Two, three days. Mm -hmm. By the time you imagine you're planning to put it out, you're already sharing. Already that guy is already monetized. It is under him. And if you can't find the IP address, that's what you've lost out. So mm -hmm. everything that was monetized there is going to that person. I know artists that have lost a lot of money like that. Yeah. And I, I sing about this all the time. And artists still do it. Even some of the artists that I, I distribute for. And yeah. I tell them, listen, ah, you see that video? But in Gachoka audio in two days, I said, you can't. You have to give me at least four or five days. Mm -hmm. Ah, the guy tomorrow even drops a video. Yeah. He drops a video and that's when he even sends you the audio. No, upload. But the video is already out. That's a problem. It's a big problem. You can't keep doing that, guys. It, it's treated as... And that's the reason why people <coughs> need to have... Need to start having professional people. Like when the music is done, yeah. hand it over to that guy. That guy now and the team is going to sit down and say, okay, we've decided this drops 15th January. Mm -hmm. Artist doesn't have a say. No, but if I don't know, it doesn't work like that, my brother. We've decided it's 15th, it's 15th. Mm -hmm. Okay, Abel Black, can you upload this for us? Make sure that everything is set and when it's done, you know, pick one or two songs, um, try and get them playlists or whatever, because there's enough time for you to be able to do that. Yeah. So once you do that, it becomes easy. All you're doing now is just waiting for it to go live because you have done all the groundwork. Everything is done. You probably even have shot some TikTok videos. You're just keeping them when the song goes live. Don't do impromptu stuff. I think the problem with people is they don't understand that there's strategy behind yeah. these things. Because they might see Chris Brown say dropping a song tomorrow. Not knowing these people, people, people have been planning for six months. Two months ago. Six yeah. months even. Yeah. 
So there's a, there's, there's a strategy aspect to branding and also music release that even just announcing, you can't announce unless you have the file, everything has been done. Like you need to be three steps now, ahead of what you're That's the biggest problem. Announcing. I'm telling you. Yeah. Somebody's announcing that it's dropping a song on Friday. He hasn't even recorded his verses. Yeah. He probably just has a beat and maybe a chorus. And he's already announcing. <laughs> and they're quick to announce. He's already announcing, I'm dropping this on Friday. It's a fire. You haven't even recorded your verse. Mm -hmm. God forbid something happens to you. What happens? Yeah, like Zesco. <clears throat> just anything can happen. That's why it's yeah. important. Like for me, I never make an announcement until I see sent on my tune call. Mm -hmm. I've said everything else. I've distributed and Tunko have I've seen it's even in green. It's been sent. It's yeah. been sent to all the stores. Mm -hmm. And I know it's gone. I even call the boom play guys and tell me, well, we can see. You give them the UPC and they can see it in the back end. Mm -hmm. And I know now it's a goal. Like whatever happens from here, it's yeah. a goal. The song is going to drop on the day that I say it's dropping. Now I'm comfortable to announce because I know there's not going to be any hiccups. I've done the right thing. Mm -hmm. Everything is set. It's not one of those. I said, no, ah, we're going to upload my hero. High corner, man. <laughs> Don't do that, man. So you mentioned the UPC code being sent to Boomplay. Yeah. How does someone collaborate with Boomplay in that, in that way? And I'm sure that's for promo and other things. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. So for me, basically, that because we have a relationship and obviously mm -hmm. they also want to capitalize on the numbers that we do because obviously if I do numbers, they also make money. Sorry to cut you short. Yeah. I think we need to clarify that people who think to get music on Boomplay, you can only do it through Boomplay. No. They need to understand that the other distributors yes. can also get yes, it to Yes, yes, yeah. yes, 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 mm -hmm. you can. I mean, you can do it through Boomplay, but I always advise just to do it through a distributor. Because they can send to everyone. Yeah, else. you can yeah. send to everybody. Yeah. You know, so that also, and also Boomplay would also want to collaborate with you if you know that your numbers are good. Mm -hmm. You know, like you have to prove yourself. Like even for me, the artist that I was distributing for, for me it was never like, oh no, this is my artist. They want to prove like the artist can do the numbers. Yeah. So when I could prove that, oh, the artist that I'm giving to them could do the numbers. Because I remember when I was next as CEO, mm -hmm. when I first did exclusive, I wanted to do exclusive for everybody else, but they doubt because they didn't know the artist. Mm -hmm. So you can't blame them. Yeah. So the music has to first organically reach a certain number for them to say, oh, yeah, people are showing interest here. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, mm, Chida One is moving numbers. Oh, Toela is moving numbers. Oh, Triple M is doing good. Mm -hmm. So now you've already created that um, relationship. So every time when a song is about to come out, mm -hmm. you write to them. Now it's not even email. We just send them a WhatsApp message. Oh, no, this song is coming out. This is the UPC. Can you check for me if it's there in the back end? Oh, yeah, it's there. Then they, they make assets for you. They, they prepare everything, you know. They give you visibility. They put you on some playlists. So do you send them images that they need yeah, to use? Yeah, of okay. course. You have to send them images. So just to be clear, saying someone with poor numbers can't get that No, package. you can't. Because What's how that? does that benefit them? If you have potential, I mean, well, you never I mean, know. Potential, I mean, they, obviously, they want to see organic reach. So what's the minimum threshold for you to be considered for I, that? I can't tell. I mean, they obviously, they want to see, they want to see you in the search. Who's the lowest... Okay, not name, but number-wise, like the people they've worked with, what's the lowest streams that the person was getting before they, they got on that? To be honest, I'm not too sure. I, you know, I think, I, think, mm -hmm. I think the way they look at that is that they, they look at your organic reach. I don't think it even has to be like a lot. They just have to see your organic reach. They have to see movement. You know, they can is tell. Is 1K okay? Uh, who? Is, is 1K? 1K streams. Is it It's five? a little. Five? Fifty? Uh, like, what I, think, like I think in yeah. a day, you know, if, if in a day if you can do like a 5,000... Mm -hmm. That's okay. And, and you know, they also, yeah. you see how they determine that is, you know, in the trending, you know, because there's an algorithm there. Yeah. So it, it shows you who is searching what. So there's that top 20 search, mm -hmm. search engine. Mm -hmm. So if you are constantly appearing in that search engine, already they know that there's interest. The people that yeah. are showing interest, people want to listen to your music. So that's how they know that, oh, this guy, there's something there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like even in the trending, in the trending top 100, if you are there, you know, it shows you who is trending. Yeah. You know, this particular hour and if they keep every hour, two, three days, four, five days, mm -hmm. they know that there's something there. So they know there's potential. Then now they give you playlisting, you know, because mm -hmm. already you have shown with your organic reach that you can get to those numbers. So they'll help you bump it. So what I normally tell artists when you come in, when you're in the come up, like even for me, yes. I'll say, oh, this is my art. Like this is AC. His song did very well. But, you know, like, yeah, the last one didn't do as well. So they won't give you any playlist. They want to see that he's actually reaching the organic reach. And if he doesn't, there's nothing I can do. So even if someone has the money to pay for promo... If you have money to pay for the promo, pay. So what, do what, it. what are the rates like for that? What's the It the starts average? at $40 to go to about 
$1,000, about $900 to be specific. So for that one, anyone with money yeah. can pay for the promo? Yes, you can pay for the promo. Can they come to you for that Yes, package? they can come to me. How do they approach you? Uh, they can email me. They can they can text me. My number is on my Facebook page. If you just mm -hmm. search for KB Killer Beats, my number is on my profile. Mm -hmm. You can always text me, email me, yeah. uh, WhatsApp me, and yeah, then I'll connect you to the guys at Boomplay. And then for consultation for the digital content that you do, how do people work with you? Well, consultation like you and I, I don't know if you have started charging. Normally, I, I give out free information, you know, obviously, but I'm trying to put it together. So what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm working with artists. Like, for example, if there's good, like right now, I'm working with uh, Flex, mm -hmm. you know, because I've seen potential. So I've taken upon yeah. myself, I've opened his own uh, distribution um, thingy. So I'm, I'm distributing his music and slowly you know, we'll grow the brand together and yeah. So, and, and obviously, uh, like I said, you know, I'm, I'm working with a couple of established artists and it's going pretty well. Um, you have to have the potential, but also it, for me to make an investment, because it's expensive. You know, what people don't realize that mm -hmm. to make an artwork, first of all, it's between 200, 250, 300, it depends who's making mm -hmm. your artwork. Yeah. So you're spending about, okay, just for argument's sake, from 150 to about 300 quarter to make an artwork. Uh, that's actually very low. You see? Yeah. You see? You're saying it's very low. Um, I would say minimum 500 culture to even 15 pin. Okay, maybe because I've got yeah. relationship yeah. with people that will do me 250, 300. Yeah. That's how much I pay. I pay 250, 300. Mm -hmm. That's artwork, first of all. Yeah. Number two, I know there's, I, I just can't remember all of them, but I know just to put up a song, to have a song go live, and you have to spend at least like a thousand. Just audio. Mm -hmm. This is even before doing any challenges and you know so it, it's it's an expensive venture yeah you know and now like I, like i was saying the other time we now pay 19 dollars to to put up a single on tune call mm -hmm. and that's how much you're going to be paying yearly to keep your your music there they've actually doubled it it used to be 10 dollars. now it's 19 dollars. if you're going to add future stores that's 11 dollars. can you explain what future stores is so future yeah. future stores basically is uh, when you pay that so what will happen is that anytime there's a store that just pops up. Like how Boom Play showed up. Yes. Yeah. They won't have to ask you. They'll just automatically add it to that. They'll store. just add it. Yeah. But I stopped opting for that. I thought it was a bit of a wastage of money. If I want to opt to something that I think is good, I can just opt in at any time that I want to. You know, there's a distributor that allows you that for free. Yeah, I know. Yeah. No, I'm just saying some, some, yeah, some yeah, benefits yeah. that Tunco doesn't yeah, have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. But there's some distributors that don't create a UPC for you. You have to pay for the UPC. And others do it for free, yeah. Tunku does it for free. The one, yeah, there's there's actually a lot that do it for free. It's yeah, just maybe CD Baby and yeah. um, which other And CD Baby keeps, remember, CD Baby keeps, is it 15 or 20%? Somewhere there. You pay, you pay a, 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 an annual subscription mm -hmm. and they keep 15%. Mm -hmm. Is that so, right? <laughs> I haven't used them in a while. I've used but, them. But yeah, it was I, I, yeah, like I, I, I've used them. I'm, I'm yeah. a curious guy. I've used mm -hmm. a lot of distributors. Mm -hmm. I've used CD, I, I've used CD Baby, I've used yeah. DistroKid, I've used TuneCo, 1RPM. I, I was almost using Amuse. You should try it. I was almost using Amuse. Yeah. And, I, and I tried to use Root Note. Oh my God, the <laughs> headache to work with. My goodness. Just, you know, just navigating through it. You know, they're taking 36 hours to get back to you. So guys... He's going through the hard work, so it's easier for you. So don't don't st don't start going through the same problem. Exactly. So just come to me. And you, yeah. That's exactly what what we're trying to say. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I mean, for us, it's good because we learned. We learned the hard way. We made a lot of mistakes, and we learned from that mistakes. Yeah. And we try to polish it. And and you know, I'm I'm not. I still learn. Like until today, here's my winner. I call you every now and then. I call you. So how do you do that? How? how oh, then you explain to me. And my other to go to person is is the hoster. I think hoster is a legend. You know, he's been doing it for a while now. You yeah. know, if I'm stuck somewhere, I remember when I was trying to set up my account and to do taxes and that sort of thing. It was a bit complicated. Is that should we speak on that? Yeah, we can quickly talk about it. So the way the way these platforms work, you can't access your money Unless, without setting up your tax information. Yes, you have to do your taxes. You know, and uh, and I've I've heard people come to me to say my streams are, are going up, but I can't see any money. Yeah. Usually, how they do it, you won't even know how much you're making unless Until you, you set up your, yeah, your. Yeah, you need to set up your yeah. tax and yeah. everything. So, and that's the reason why it's easy to just come to me and I set it up for you. Yeah. You know, I just set it up. All you have to do is just worry about your music. Mm -hmm. But uh, right now, I'm going to do it. You know, the ones, like, if you want to do it yourself, 
and I've tried. And I'm, and I, yeah. I'm not even stingy with information. I even, I even go get you a video that I learned from, how like step by step how to upload, and I give it to you, and they'll still come back to me. Personally, I charge for consultation. No, it's good. Yeah, I mean, I'll, yeah. I'll start charging. For me, I'm not yet charging because I have artists that I'm doing the work for. You know, like you come yeah. to me and say, oh, KB, I want to start distributing my music. Oh, okay, we just agree. Okay, I'm going to get this percentage. I'll do everything. Yeah. I'll be giving you, whenever you want to see a report, I'll be giving you transparency, everything. Then this is my percentage. Mm -hmm. We agree, agree, we sign. That's it. Then I do everything. I do your taxes. I, you know, account, everything. The money comes into my account yeah. and I, you know, whatever this is your money i give you your money you're happy i'm happy we move on from that yeah the future of streaming going into 2024 where do you see in terms of revenue would it be the younger yeah or the, the younger the younger the future i mean the younger ones are busy ones. like i told <laughs> you my top four was tiktok facebook youtube mm -hmm. ideally it was always spotify it was boom play spotify apple then these others but it's shifted now it's TikTok number one, Facebook, Facebook, Instagram Reels number two, YouTube number three. Mm -hmm. So it tells you, and these are young people. You won't find people my age on TikTok. I mean, they're there, but a lot of people that are on TikTok are 17 year olds yeah. to about 24 year olds. Those yeah. are the ones that have got time to be on TikTok and creating all these things. So that's where they, the money is going. So you want to tap into that younger generation and you want to make sure that you are you are abreast with the trends, you know, don't, don't limit yourself. Don't be stuck mm -hmm. in old ways, you know, embrace change, embrace what's happening is very important. And that's the reason why we always keep our eyes. Like for me, basically what I like to do is that I like to work with younger people and I, I and for me, research never ends. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm a junk for research, you know, like I, I want to know what's happening every now and then I want to, oh, what's, what's stopping now? Like what's doing what, you know what I'm saying? I get curious, I want to know. And that's the reason why I joined, I was never going to be on TikTok. Until I knew that you can make money. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, for me, I like, what am I doing on TikTok? I, you know, I don't know how to dance. You know, like, what am I doing on TikTok? Yeah. You know, so, yeah. Looking at the current era we are in, people mm. are shifting from Kishiyama CD. I'm sure some people still say, sell CDs. No. I was, no, I was, I was lit su no, listen, souvenir. listen, listen. No. I was literally at an event. Let me mention the name. Ephraim Sang. After the performance, he passed around asking for anyone willing to buy the CDs. People bought. Souvenir. So people are still making money from that. Souvenir. No, but as an artist... Tell me which, young, an, artist, tell me which young artist even know what a CD No, listen, like. as an artist, you should look at all revenue. That's like Boom Play versus Spotify. It's better to be everywhere than to be on one, right? So you're saying you should still print CDs? Sell CDs if you can sell them. Souvenir, yeah. If you can sell them. I, I don't think I can sell CDs anymore. I don't think I've got anybody that... Well, I'll have a couple of okay. people like maybe... I know maybe 20 people that would just want to have something signed and just to keep like, oh, I bought this CD from KB, but naturally no. Still money. Even people that do flash this guy, are like, what are you doing? KB, it's if money. You, no, listen, uh. you're doing, you're limiting yourself. How? No, I mean, if you're doing streaming and that. No, don't do flash discs. Just go streaming. Why are you doing flash discs? First of all, you're wasting money, number one. And number two, you know, flash discs, is, it doesn't give you value. Like when somebody gets that music on a flash, it doesn't give you value, but if I keep sending you back to the streaming, you've got a phone. Just get one of the applications no, and keep streaming my music. <laughs> if someone buys your T-shirt, for example, what value? Are that's they different. That's, that's a merchandise. Music is no, different, my brother. What if they brother. make it? Ngacha song kolopo cha kitchen. How do you know they how they're using that T-shirt? Well, it doesn't matter. What I'm that's trying to say. That's the point. It doesn't matter how they use it. What matters is you do what you have to do. Able Black. Yeah. You're not going to make a lot of money from selling flash disks or CDs. It, Let's it, be honest. It, it depends. <laughs> it depends. Okay, so what, I, what, I, what I'm trying to drive to yeah. is we had a generation where CDs or albums were sold on CDs. They could, actually they could be in. one hit song yeah. on the entire album. That mm -hmm. makes people buy the CD. Yeah, that's true. They won't even listen to maybe 50% yeah, of the songs. Yeah, that's always, that's always the case. But streaming now has an option where people only listen to what they like. Yeah. Which has now introduced the singles era. Mm -hmm. where people now have to actually pay attention to the singles they put in the albums mm -hmm. because otherwise the single can outdo or outperform an album yeah so looking at Zambia, and, a, and an mm -hmm. album can also outperform it, it can work either way for me both have worked it, but my, i'm driving towards that but okay. the thing is the singles have to be good if they're on the album yeah then it will outperform a single yeah but if there's one good single on the album the way we used to do it because i've seen like just this past year i've yeah. seen a lot of people put an album and they haven't had like a solid, because you, you need at least like one or two songs that can drive the album. 
Yeah. Everybody needs that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can put out a project, it's got good songs, but doesn't have a driving. So you find out mm -hmm. that it people will listen to it like, oh, this, uh, two, three months, and just, you don't want that when it comes to streaming. Yeah. And this is the algorithm that I've, I've come to learn. And this is something that I even I've been a little proud of. There are certain albums, there are certain albums, mm -hmm. like I'll give an example, like um, my last album, Family Reunion. Family yeah. Reunion obviously has got about three songs that are doing okay. So that would be um, the one with Killer. What's that song again? Younger Me. Yeah. Younger Me, Dear Baby Mama, and Diary. That's where Diary 12 is. Mm -hmm. So these, these three songs out of the nine songs yeah. are the best performing songs. So they're keeping the album bubbling. So every time I go like on Spotify, I see the numbers are just, the numbers are just bubbling. They're just, you know, they're keeping the album moving. Then you see that some songs don't even get a single stream. Mm -hmm. Like you see like some songs, like you see like, oh, this one has got like maybe 300, blah, blah, blah. This one's getting zero, zero, one. Some even get like one stream, one stream, yeah. two streams. You know what I'm saying? So what I'm trying to say is, you want to have one or two good songs that will keep it bubbling. And also when you're making music, it's not always about, I want to make a banger. You also want to make that people that just listen to good music. Mm -hmm. I'll give an example. I've got songs that, I don't know when was the last time you heard a, This Love Is New, the one I featured Sheffield on radio or in a club anyway. But if I tell you, it's my mm -hmm. second best performing song till today. It's just behind Kalema, the original Kalema. Mm -hmm. If there was no Kalema, it would, it would be on number one. Ordinary Lover was on top for the longest of time. Yeah. But with this, every every month or every year, the song, instead of going like this, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's either it's like the graph is like it's going like this, then it stays like this, it's never going like this. If it goes just a little bit, then comes back. So it's, you also want to have catalog that will just keep you bubbling. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So this yeah. is a song from three years ago. And it's my second best stream song, followed by another song from that same album that features Yo Maps, Maki Two, and Rosary. Like when I check when I check on, on my yeah. Apple and, and on my Spotify, the numbers like it's it's Kalema, this love is new, it's too late. In that order. So what's the future of albums? Just off what you're saying. What do you, what do you, what do you see as the future of albums? So the future of future for albums is um, it's still good. Is it's it a bit relevant to do an album. It is. It is very relevant. It's still very. I know. I know. So there will be an argument. No, it's better to do single. It is because collectively, I've seen if you do on an album, collectively you are likely to get more streams because people are listening to a whole body of work <laughs> and they'll be interested to listen to the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And while listening, they might pick up maybe two or three good songs that they'll continue listening to, and that helps. So it spreads out all these streams you know, across the board, unlike when just having one single. And if your one single is not mm -hmm. strong enough, my friend, your single will just be bubbling for like a month and that's it, and it dies a natural death. My argument is, if you have one thing to focus on, you put all your efforts on one thing, this is a whole body But that's the one thing might not even work. No, but when it does work... When it does work, then it's good. Like, look but at, look at, Kalema. Look at Kalema. Yeah, Kalema did very versus well. Versus maybe some of your albums. Wouldn't you say it's maybe even... Actually, Kalema... Kalema, Kalema the, the, actual single has got more streams than my last album my last album my last album family has got 3.5 million kalema's got 4.4 million just a single well yeah, which is but, true but that's the thing yeah but i i still ask for me i still go for both you know so you say i, I, I just i just okay here's my mm -hmm. thing just don't drop the albums too close to each other give a space of two to three years with the album two to three years yeah don't do a year don't do every year an album so frequency of singles should be even every month if you can and then albums. It depends. Uh -huh. Yeah. So why I say the month is that sometimes you might put out something that might not work the way you want it. Mm -hmm. Like for example, for me, Kalema worked. I didn't have to put out anything. Mm -hmm. You know, Kalema's been out for four months and it's still performing very well. Mm -hmm. You know, naturally, I don't feel like I need to put out anything, but also you just need to put out some some music, just you know, to keep everything yeah. bubbling. You know, like I don't think I yeah. put out anything that is even threatening Kalema. You know, like now I I haven't. Yeah. You know, I want to, but I haven't. And yeah. I can't fight that. Obviously, I'll, I'll continue putting out. And I, I put out a song three days ago, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, four days ago. Mm -hmm. uh, it's moving, but not moving like the way Kalema did. You know, Kalema yeah. was just like Kalema, Ordinary Lover, those songs moved. Then there are songs like the one I'm talking about, mm -hmm. This Love in You, started very slow. 
the video was doing very well, it started very slow. It moved like maybe from number 20, started going up mm -hmm. to number 18, and now it's number two after three years. So there are wow. songs that can okay. work. You know, there's, there's certain songs that people won't get just there and then, but you know it's a good song. Yeah. So you don't give up on that song. You know in your head, you know it's a good song, but it's just mm -hmm. not working in that particular time. One day people will just gravitate towards it. Maybe somebody will do a TikTok challenge or something will just happen and everybody will gravitate and maybe to, like I tell you, like the mm -hmm. song for uh, AC Nakangiwa. Mm -hmm. People vibe to it here a little bit. I mean, when it came out, nobody was really crazy about it until yeah. it hit in Kenya. When it hit in Kenya, it came here now when it went viral on TikTok. Now, as we speak, it's just about 20,000 streams away to hit its a million on Spotify. A million on Spotify. Yep. And this is a relatively established artist. No, this is AC. No, like as in compared to the top. Oh, top yeah, he's not even a top artist. Yeah. I mean, he's a very talented artist <clears throat> yeah. that did that one really big record. So that also tells you that it's not always that songs will just... There are some songs that... This, this will brings grow in... Gradually. There's a conversation I've had with people. Yeah. They feel... I think you've hinted at it also. Like when you drop a song, and you, then you drop another one too soon, that it affects the it other It does song. affect. So now if you're saying this love is new, by itself kept growing despite yeah. other songs being released, yeah. doesn't that prove that a song has its own life, independent of the it, other songs. It, it, it has, but w but in this case, what we're trying to say is that, say, for example, the mm -hmm. way I dropped Kalema, mm -hmm. just when it's gaining momentum, I put out... It, well, Kalema will not really be affected like that if mm -hmm. it's a big song, but I think that it, 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 it diverts you a little bit. Are you talking about the promo or how the listeners are listening to the songs? Well, I mean, I wouldn't know that for the fact. I think maybe you would have an no, idea. No, because if I listen to a good song, it's a good song. Yeah. I'll listen to it again. Whether a new song comes out or not, that song okay, is still a good true. song. You have a point. I mean, I didn't think about it like that, but the way I think in my head, I'm thinking mm -hmm. if you put out something, you're distracting people. Like, come on, we're still listening to this song. Why are you putting out another one? But also, Who can't also listen to point, two songs at the same yeah, time? Yeah, no, you're right. <laughs> you actually do have a point. Uh, you actually do have a point. So that mindset is flawed, right? It needs to be investigated. Because <laughs> <laughs> no, I've had this conversation with no, a lot you, of people and no, they all feel like... It's, it's the same thing like now. Yeah. Listen, this, this... Oh, sorry. I get comfortable sometimes. Yeah. This, this coming new year, a lot of people... Chile mm -hmm. One is dropping his album. I know J Cash is dropping, is dropping a single. Mm -hmm. Maki Two is dropping a single. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll probably be like... Ma it, Tommy D is dropping an album. Is it tomorrow? This is just... It's it's tomorrow, a, yeah. Yes, tomorrow. This is just in a space of three, four days that six seven big artists dropping at the same time mm -hmm. i still feel like nothing will be affected but sometimes i feel like if you drop with like a very heavy weight it mm -hmm. might kind of affect you a little bit because most of the concentration might go to somebody that people deem like oh this is the hardest guy at the moment so you might get a bit affected but people will still come back to your content and still listen to you because mm -hmm. it's not like people when they go on an app you're the only one they're listening to yeah after listening to say for example listen to tommy it's like ah. Uh, KB also has something. Let me listen to KB. Mm -hmm. And they find that they love it. They add it to the playlist. Yeah. So already I'm also getting... You know what I'm so saying? So just make good songs. Yeah, no, that's true. Just yeah. make good songs. Don't be scared of competition. You're right. Just make good music. And if you put it out, it doesn't work. Go back to the drawing board. Go back to the studio. Put out another one, you know. Mm -hmm. Don't it's stay six months without putting out something. <laughs> In conclusion, you said something like, you know a song is good but people don't get that it's a good yeah. song. Is there something that you should continue doing for that song so that it, it, it eventually picks up or do you just sort of let it be? You have to keep people? trying. You have to keep what trying. What kind of things would you be doing in that case? You have to keep trying to put it in people's faces. Sometimes, you know, promos like even our friends that have got money, mm -hmm. they invest heavily mm -hmm. until you start to get irritated. You know, if they have yeah. to tell people, play it on radio 10 times, you know, use it on your wedding lineups until mm -hmm. people, until it's just in people's ears. You yeah. know, and you know it. You and I know what the good song sounds like. But sometimes even the good songs people don't vibe to. And sometimes like a weird song is like, how is this song big? Like sometimes I, I like, I don't get it. Like how is, this song is huge, but what's right. with this song? Yeah. You know, so sometimes like maybe it was popular at a wedding and, you know, maybe somebody saw how somebody was dancing to it on TikTok. Mm -hmm. There's just something that evokes something in people you know what i'm saying so it's, yeah. it's, just, it's not always that it's the best of best songs but it's just how it made you feel when you listen to it when you are at a party or you know that, that sort of thing so sometimes mm -hmm. you might try to push something and it's not working 
And sometimes you push, like I've pushed some songs, like I put out a single and I push, I push, I push, it's not happening, I know this is not happening. <laughs> you leave it, you go to the next one. And yeah. you'll be like sometimes like, oh, after three, four months, like all of a sudden, like I saw there's a song of mine that I tried to push, didn't do well, then I just saw the, the report on Pandora, it's like, what? People still streaming the song? Yeah, Pandora. Like very good money. Mm. Yeah. I, okay. I, I study numbers for a living. I mean, I, I you know, and I'm... Did it state which country the... Yes. Mm -hmm. Sweden, I think it was Sweden and most of it was from Sweden. Wow. So for my conclusion is that there are some Swedish people that found the song, they loved it and they must have added it on some playlist and it mm -hmm. just went viral and they all kept on playing it and, yeah. and that's how it accumulated those numbers. Like okay. the numbers were very, very, that song of mine, Mutima Wapwanya, the one mm -hmm. with the two ladies, yeah. Rachel and Leah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That song I picked up? Well, on Pandora it did well. Still, it's, it's the best performance song on Pandora. Well, that's the one. Yeah. That, really? Yeah, it's the best performance song on Pandora. Like, none of my songs, like, like all my reports, like the most, like even from Kalema, I would get is like maybe $2. Yeah. That one was giving me $67. You know, if, okay. if I make a little 40 I think the last report, I think I made about 20 something dollars from that particular song. So, okay. so sometimes also, you might think that the song didn't do well, but listen, the globe is so big. That also shows the importance of being everywhere. Because exactly. if that platform didn't have your song. You, you might be thinking, ah, not flop, eh, sir, but I'm making money off that same flop. Yeah. That's <laughs> how it is. Okay, so I think for now we've, we've pretty much covered We haven't everything. covered even half of the things that we wanted to talk about. We need <laughs> no, to continue I mean, this the, conversation. In the time frame. That's yeah, in the, the time frame that we have, is, yeah. as far as we could go. Maybe yeah. just mention where we are so that... Yeah, yeah. We, so we are at my favorite spot. This is Fox and Hound. A very good spot. We're upstairs here. You yeah. know, very nice. Look at the aquarium here behind me. It's very peaceful and nice. If you want, you can have it downstairs. It's a nice spot. The food is wonderful. Yeah. And it's just a very good spot to hang out. You know, and uh, yeah, I've got a very good relationship with the owner. So, yeah. Right. No, thank you very much. It's Mr. Black. conversation. <laughs> yeah, always great. I mean, we've been talking about this for the longest of time. Yeah. We're always talking in the background. And by the way, me and Black talk like on a weekly basis. We yeah. pretty much... We've just never had this conversation and we've, we've been planning to do this for a very long time. Yeah. And if you like this, maybe we should start a podcast of our own. What you say? <laughs> <laughs> no, nice we'll see, one, man. We'll see, we'll see what happens. Yeah.